CAD community. My name is Reagan Milligan and I am a third year construction management major. I'd like to introduce my guest, Caitlin Murchison. Caitlin is the Vice President of Construction and Development at Heller Pacific in Sacramento. Caitlin, nice to have you here today. Thanks so much for having me. It's nice to meet you. So I think that I'd like to get us started and just learn a little bit more about what your experience was like at Cal Poly. Um, yeah, happy to share. So my experience at Cal Poly was a great one. Um, it was very positive and fulfilling. And I actually didn't start as a construction management major. I started in biology. Um, so I kind of floundered for a little while while I realized that biology was not the path I wanted, um, but I didn't know what that path was and ended up being connected by a friend who was already in the major with one of the professors that used to be in the CM department, Hal Johnston, and found my way through. He helped me kind of make the transition and I found the construction management department and started taking major classes there. And at the time it was, you know, four classrooms in a single hallway. It was much smaller than the facilities that exist now. Um, and it was just a really, really incredible sense of community. Um, people who were driven, but very fun. Um, we, got, we got our stuff done, but we partied and had barbecues and had clubs and everyone was really engaged. Um, and so that was my takeaway from my experience in the CM department. Um, really enjoyed it. Felt like I kind of found my people, still have a lot of them in my life um, to this day. So yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah, I'm having the same experience. So the classrooms may have changed, but the community definitely hasn't. And it's so awesome that um, alumni like yourself are still so involved and um, just do everything that you guys can to help us out so that we can uh, come out strong graduates and ready to to start working. So could you share a little bit more about your career path and maybe how you got to your current role at Heller Pacific? Yeah, of course. Um, so when I graduated Cal Poly in 2007, I um, had signed on in my last year to go to work for a DPR construction, um, large commercial general contractor. And so I kind of was, you know, heading that direction. So I started with them in September, 2007 and was there until February, 2016. So eight years, a little over eight years, almost nine years so. Um, and it was really, really, really incredible experience. I worked mostly in the Bay Area. Um, doing you know getting a lot of exposure to different types of projects a typical general contractor career path worked my way from project engineer to you know a little bit more senior in that role to you know project manager uh, i got a really unique um opportunity to go to work for a developer who was building kind of a three block wide ground up development in sacramento where i had grown up um and I wasn't really looking to leave my career at the time. I hadn't been looking at all, but it was, it was a good time for me. I'd been project manager for a few years. I felt like I had, you know, had some stability in that role and I knew what my future would look like if I stayed at a general contractor. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to be project based forever. I wasn't sure that I wanted to travel for the job forever. So I went to work um, for this developer in early 2016 um to kind of come on and act as a construction manager and you know developer you know running the project for design and construction for this particular developer um and ran those three ground up projects along with a variety of other tasks for a few years and now you know i'm still working there those projects are more or less completed and have taken on a whole set of new projects and my role has grown in different ways oh. You know, I would say my primary role is managing whatever development projects we have in front of us from a design and construction perspective. So we do generally either adaptive reuse or ground up construction. Um, and I'm the point person for the design team, for the jurisdiction, you know, city, county, whoever we're dealing with, um, and the contractors in, in that sense. And kind of as branches from that, I also, 
you know, for our developments help in lease negotiations. Um, and so, you know, with each lease comes different tenants wanting different things. Um, and so I kind of help our leasing team navigate, you know, I'll read the language um, for what the tenant is asking for. And I'll kind of say, yes, we can do that. No, we can't do this. You know, those kinds of things and help that side of the lease negotiation. And then as it progresses into a signed lease, um, they then deliver to us their tenant improvement drawings and I'll review those and then guide them through kind of the, the permit submittal process because I've now spent so much time getting intimate with the city of Sacramento. I can help them navigate that and then help them, you know, with the bidding process, the construction process, but the typical situation will be that they hire kind of their own design and construction team and then we help them manage that. So it's really cool to hear that you found that your construction knowledge was essential to help you be a better developer, I think, in the industry. Um, so yeah, absolutely. The, the experience I had, you know, coming up as a general contractor, I think was necessary. Um, and I, you know, it, it translated really well. I, there are certainly lots of things I've learned and I've had to learn, um, being on the developer side, there are interactions with tenants and, you know, banks, um, leasing, you know, um, entitlements, things that I really hadn't been a part of um, on the GC side that I, I'm still learning, but, you know, kind of jumped right in and learned intensely as I started. Um, but I still use so many of the skills um, coming up through construction um, on a daily basis. Um, so kind of moving on, do you feel like there was a person or an experience that kind of shaped who you are um, in your career? Probably one of the most prominent ones was maybe two years into my time at DPR. I had a senior project manager. We were on a very tough project, um, really interesting, challenging project. And I had a super stern, rigid, and, and tough um, senior project manager who we, I think there were four of us project engineers at the time and he was whipping us into shape. It was like an intense training session and, uh, it was a lot, but his, his kind of expectations of us and, um, his guidance on how to be tough, but fair really, really shaped, um, how I've kind of moved through my career since then. So I think it's a really important thing in a career to to look for and seek out those people who can help guide you on your path. To find those connections and those resources to help guide you, I think is really critical for, you know, especially, you know, younger people in their careers as they're trying to navigate it and understand what that path should look like. Um. What is your best piece of advice for someone who's about to graduate? And it can be either professionally or personally. Um, it can feel like every decision is, you know, the most important one, whether it's picking a company or where you're going to work or whatever in your life. But, you know, you can always unmake it and make a different one if it doesn't feel right. So, you know, I would say just really listening to your gut and staying open to whatever opportunities are out there. You know, it's, it's pretty crazy sometimes um, how opportunities just present themselves. And if you're paying attention, uh, you know, you, you might say like, wow, that, I didn't think about that path, but that, that does feel like the right one. I think that's a really good piece of advice. I feel like um, as a woman in the industry, you always want to do the right thing because you want to earn the respect of everyone on site and they kind of underestimate you or just think maybe you don't know what you're talking about. So you always kind of want to make the right decision the first time and yeah. you don't want to make a, a mistake. But um, I think learning from your mistakes is, is really important. With everything going on, how has coronavirus um, impacted your sector of the con like of the construction industry? At least in Sacramento, actually, kind of all construction has been allowed to progress. Um, okay. But for sure, housing is you know a supported sector. Um, 
So fortunately, we've had no hiccups on the construction side of it. And I think that's aided by the fact that we're in the ground right now. So we're in structural concrete. Um, so when it comes to material sourcing and things like that, we're not looking for cabinets. We're not looking for flooring. We're not looking for things that might um, be a little bit, little bit limited right now, um, either in manufacturing or shipping or whatever. So I think we've really benefited from just being in this stage in the project construction-wise. So I, I think that's an anomaly construction-wise because I'm seeing, you know, some of my really good friends in the Bay Area are just completely shut down. But, you know, it's just, it's a lesson in being flexible and adapting and reacting and Try not to get too attached to what's happening because it's a dynamic changing environment every day. Um, so maybe something a little bit more fun. What do you enjoy doing in your spare time if you have any? Oh, I have, I have plenty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I spend a ton of time in the outdoors. Um, I do a lot of hiking, I have a dog, so he and I cruise with friends, my boyfriend, my family. Um, yeah, just spending time with the people I love, spending time outdoors. I travel a lot, um, try to get in at least one big trip, usually an abroad trip a year. Um, and that's always fun to take, you know, to take a real vacation at least a couple weeks where I can kind of shut down and like say, I'm really not gonna get anything done while I'm away. Um, I think it's important. Um, I took a six week sabbatical when I was at DPR and it was really hard <laughs> to let go because I really had to let go and I really, people really had to do my things while I was gone. It felt like such a burden to ask of people, but um, you know, it's important, I think, to have that reset button. And you know, some companies like DPR have these sabbaticals that they give you um, on these milestones in your, you know, in your, length with the company because they value that and think that you know it it makes people return refreshed and re-engaged um, um thank you caitlin for taking time to talk with me today i so enjoyed getting to learn a little bit more about you and your career um and i hope we get to talk again soon yeah same it's been great getting to know you and maybe we'll meet in person one day soon <laughs>